Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran and welcome to the SPL Pre-Scene Debrief for December 2024 exam. This time, the Pre-Scene Debrief is around an event management industry and the name of the organization is Rodnim Events. This is the sixth Pre-Scene Debrief taking place since it was introduced in September 2023 by ACCA. And that means a lot of industries have been put into perspective by ACCA, starting with the airline industry, the cloud computing industry, the football industry, the football club industry rather, the pet wet industry. We had the ride hailing industry. And this time around, we have an event management industry to look into. Now, Let's open up this debrief. Let's start to take a holistic idea what, what this session holds for each one of you. Now, the agenda of this discussion today uh, is first to look into the misconceptions with pre-scene quickly, summarizing the pre-scene for December 24, which is the main agenda, likely questions based upon my perspective, which could be wrong even, key models and key articles. The last three is based upon assumptions, and those assumptions might prove right or wrong on the given day of the exam, so be sure with that. Let's first open with the misconceptions with pre-scene. First of all, you must all be very sure that pre-scene is not the answer. So at, at most of the time, the student tends to like rote learn the pre-scene uh, in a hope that this is the answer for the day of exam, not at all. The answer to the questions given to you on the day of exam, the three tasks you have on the day of exam, the answer to those three tasks will come from the four exhibits which are given to you on the day of exam. So 90% to 100% of your answer will be coming from the exhibits which are given to you on the day of exam. So uh, the reading you have done of pre-scene, the summaries you have made of pre-scenes, what is the use? It's just providing you the context. It's just making you familiar with some facts and figures about Rodnim events. Uh, those facts and figures can spontaneously help you somewhere. Now, perhaps, for example, we all know that the net promoter score for Rodnim event is going down. We all know that the revenue for Rodnim events is going up. Uh, we, we all know that the profit margins for Rodnim events is going down. So we, we know these facts and figures. So we, we have like, uh, we have some idea about this industry. We have an idea about this uh, organization and that, that can really uh, help us somewhere in the exam paper. So you know the types of the information system Rodnim Events is using. Uh, you know the popularity of the virtual events growing up. So such sort of knowledge is is there with every one of us, right? So when, when you're writing the answer on the day of exam, uh, we can recall something spontaneously and we can just link that to the answer, like revenue going up or like profits going down or like the, 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 the successful tenders, the percentage of successful tenders have gone slightly up than the last year. So all such things can come into the answer any point in time, but it's not about a forceful application of the pre-scene. Look at the point number last on your screen. It's, it's not about the forceful application because a lot of time the student do unnecessary copy pasting of pre-scene, which SPL examining team does not like at the end of the day. The student believe that if they're writing an answer and that answer has no reflection of pre-scene, that is a wrong answer, that is a misconception. Because the answer will come from the exhibit and there could be a certain answer where pre-scene is not used at all. So pre the percentage of pre-scene you might be using would be hardly five to 10% in the overall exam, sometime even less than that. So I hope you're very clear with the purpose of pre-scene. The purpose of pre-scene is to make you sure about Rodnim events the strengths of Rodnim events, the weaknesses of Rodnim events, the opportunities ahead of Rodnim. And I hope those facts and figures are with you at the end of the day. So wherever you recall them spontaneously, just uh, blend them in your answer. And that's, that's the ultimate objective of the pre-scene. 
I hope you're all clear on the misconceptions and what you need to do with free scene on the day of exam. Is everyone clear before we move to the summary of this free scene? Okay, great. Now just let's move on to the summary uh, of the pre scene we have for the December 2024 exams. That's the main agenda on your screen now. Now, when I was preparing the summary for uh, this December 24 pre scene, this is my sixth pre scene debrief I'm doing. So I, I thought of taking a different angle uh, to making the summary rather than choosing the models or applying the models because that, have become, that has become very monotonous. Uh, I start believing that we should bring some more innovative way of making the summary, which is more student friendly. So let's see how I thought about this debrief this time. A holistic view first before we go insight. Now, when I was looking at this pre scene information which ACCA has released around uh, the event management industry, the very first thing was to know the industry at present. What is the event management industry at present? Uh, ACCA has given us the global perspective of this event management industry, and they've also given us the event management industry in Harland, which is a country, the specific country in which we, on which we need to focus on. So we need to see the industry at present, given in the case in the pre-scene. Number two, what opportunities and threats are given in the pre-scene about this industry when we look forward? So are there any given opportunities in, on the 12 pages? Are there any given threats on the 12 pages which are important, uh, which Rodnim should be knowing? Number third, where is Rodnim event at present? Where are they standing today? Uh, they are six years into the business where are they standing today in terms of their uh, in terms of their opportunities and threats in terms of their weaknesses and strength where are they standing today what's what's probably going through the mind of amanda and sefi they are the managing partners they are the one who set up this business in in a partnership mode what's going through their mind what are they thinking about the future of their business did they know the problems they know the issues they know the challenges they know the opportunities and, and definitely every business leader needs the business to grow so they might be thinking about some strategic options for future they might be thinking about how to grow their business in future so we need to read the mind of amanda and sefi very well today what are the current business trends uh, they are they are to be built upon. So Amanda and Sefi would be thinking about what are the business strengths we have today? Uh, is, is our staff our business strength? Uh, is the revenue growing our business strength? Uh, the percentage of successful tenders are better than the last year. Is that our business strengths? What are, uh, what are the business strengths we have today? And should we build upon them and how? What are the current business issues? What are the weaknesses? Uh, and how would they be addressed? Like the net promoter score going down, that's quite a concerning factor. The profit margins are going down, that's quite a concerning factor. So things are there which needs to be addressed. What future options we have? What strategic choices we have to, to grow as a business? Currently, they're not the bigger bigger of the businesses. We know there are four large businesses who holds a 74% share. And uh, Rodnim is not among the four. Rodnim is among the smaller businesses, which takes the 26% pie chart. So there are lots of businesses which holds the 26% total market share, but 74% market share is with four large companies. And Rodnim is not one of them. So a lot of things to go uh, in the mindset of Amanda and Sefi. They need to consider lots of things for the future business growth and survival. We know it's a competitive industry. There are lots of companies and it's a prosperous industry, a prosperous country, Harland. Lots of companies can come into the future because the setup cost for an event management company is not big enough. So uh, the threat of a new entrant is very high. And that would uh, that is all what Amanda and Sefi should be thinking about. I hope this uh, holistic view is giving you some sort of an idea of how you should look into the debrief. Is everyone clear with the bullets in front of your screen? Uh, are you very clear that we have to read the mindset of Amanda and Sefi? Because they are the one 
who will take the future decisions. They are the one who will make Rodnim more successful than they are at present. So it's it's about doing the analysis where we are as Rodnim, where we want to be as Rodnim in three years down the road, and how would we get there? What options we have to make our company successful? Okay, let's, let's open up the discussion first, and let's first take the discussion around industry, event management industry. And the good thing the uh, examining team has done this time, they've given us a global perspective of this industry, and then they have given us the perspective about the country where we need to focus on, which is Harlan. Let's open up the discussion. Now, when, when we look at this industry and when we look at the global landscape of this industry, this is what I got. The revenue in 20x3, which is the latest year in the pre-scene, is $1960 billion, which is significant. So it's quite uh, a significant industry in terms of the revenue uh, for 20x3. The good thing is, that this is showing a growth of 11% over the next five years. So next five years down the road, this is a very prosperous industry growing at a rate of 11%. Now, anyone who wants to set up a business would be looking to enter into this industry knowing that the setup cost of this industry is not significant or a setup cost of an event management business is not significant. So uh, probably we might see lots of new players coming into this industry and taking up the market share. So the annual growth rate ahead is very attractive. Uh, the fees is 35 to 40% of the event ticket sales. So that's quite lucrative in terms of your, uh, in terms of your income. 35 to 40% of the event ticket sales gets back to the event management companies. So it's financially lucrative and a very competitive industry because of the 11% growth rate and looking at the revenue we have, $1,960 billion. So when you look at the global landscape of the event management industry, even I researched on the Google to know about the present realities of the, of the event management industry. And more or less, I got the similar percentages. Uh, in some literatures, I read that the growth rate for the next five years is 18 to 20% for the event management industry. So at the end of the day, it's a very prosperous industry. Now let's look at this global landscape narrow down to Harland, where we need to focus more on. How is this industry flourishing in Harland? Harland, the event management industry, the country we need to focus on. Large and economically advanced country. So that's something going in the favor of this country. It's a large country and an economically advanced country. Now, this is when you make that Porter Diamond or the national advantage you have a lot of national you have a good national advantage here because you are a, you're not just a large country but the positive thing here, here is that you're an economically advanced country now when you're an economically advanced country and you have an event management industry with you so probably you also have those related and supported industries we know event management industry needs a lot of related and supported industries right you need the workforce you need the security, you need, uh, you need uh, people who are into the catering business, uh, people who are into the decoration business. They need to help you out with setting up an event or people who are into the technological side setting, uh, helping you to set up a virtual business, virtual event, sorry. So you need a lot of related and supported industries uh, to help grow the event management industry. And because Heartland is an economically advanced country, so we probably assume they have that infrastructure for the support of the event management industry. Highly competitive event management industry they have in place in Heartland. So when they have a highly competitive event management industry, that means there are lots of companies within the event management industry. And we know four of them hold 74% share. And there are several other companies holding the 26% share, right? So highly competitive event management industry, that means the, the industry infrastructure is available. Uh, the related and supported industry within the Porter Diamond is available. And that is the reason they have this highly competitive industry in place. Next. 
Diverse range of businesses from local operators to national and international firms are part of the event management industry in Harland. Now, that's an information given to us in pre-scene. So quite a diversified businesses are within uh, within the Harland event management industry, not just the local operators. They even have some international firms as part of that 100 percent pie chart. Four companies dominate. We've already discussed that, the 74% market share, but Rodnim is not among the 74. In 20x3, the event sector generated 108 billion in revenue. So the Harland event management industry in total generated $108 billion in revenue, of which uh, the share of the event management company was $39 billion. So everything is very lucrative. Uh, everything is very attractive. Things are in favor of this industry when we even look at the perspective of Harlan as a country. So please remember, Harlan is an economically advanced country. They have the right infrastructure to support this industry. That's the reason this industry is highly competitive in Harlan. And just to know the fact that they have a good revenue of $108 billion in the 20x3, of which approximately $39 billion, billion belongs to the event management companies. Now that's the industry perspective. Now, once we have taken the industry perspective, I think we are all pretty sure that this is a very opportunistic industry. This is a very flourishing industry. So Rodnim event is placed in a very flourishing, very opportunistic uh, and a very growth oriented industry. Am I correct? So are we part of a very growth-oriented industry? Are we part of a very opportunistic industry? Are we part of an industry which is very lucrative, which is very financially stable? Now, as a business, as Amanda and Sefi, we are running a business by the name of Rodnim Event in an industry which is very prosperous, in an industry which is very flourishing. So let's see what Amanda and Sefi needs to do. Let's move on. From the industry perspective, we move to the perspective of Rodnim Events. That's the main discussion because that's the company we are facing in the exam coming up. Where we are, the present analysis of the company. Uh, when I was reading the 12 pages, uh, I tried finding information about Rodnim Events in terms of where we are as a company today. Let's do the present analysis of the company to find out uh, what is their current position in the Harland event management industry? This is what I got to know. First of all, you can see the pie chart on the screen, which shows you the four larger companies holding the bigger pie chart, which is 74%, and the smaller one holding the 26% pie chart, which is in yellow. And of that 26%, one of them is Rodnim. First of all, Rodnim was established six years ago. So they don't have a very rich history. They don't have a very experienced history. They, they were established just six years ago. So probably they are into the early growth phase or they have just come out of their startup phase. So they're standing at a point where they need a breakthrough. They're standing at a point where they need to do something for their future growth. So six years into the business, they must have understood the market. They must have understood the dynamics of the market. They must have understood the challenges of the industry. So they've survived the six years, which is a difficult phase of a business because that's the startup phase of the business. Now, having, having spent six years into the business, they know it. Uh, and they start to take some very wise decisions for the future growth of the business. The good thing is that in the six years, they have sustained their income. In the six years, the percentage of successful tenders have gone a bit up from the last year. But yes, they're facing challenges of the, of the downdrift in uh, profitability margins and a bit of issues in the net promoter score. One thing which is very good, we know Amanda and Sefi, they are the two managing partners, right? And they're coming from large event management companies. They, they were like event managers in the large event management companies before they set up their own company. So do they have a lot of experience of how event management companies are run? 
because they used to be the event managers in the large event management companies before. So six years down the road, they set up their own company. Where are they coming from, Amanda and Sefi? Amanda and Sefi are coming from uh, as like event managers of some large, very large companies in Harland. So I think they're bringing with them a very rich experience of how to run a successful event management companies. They set up their own company six years down the road and they're just into the phase where they need to give a breakthrough to their company. I hope you're getting my point. Number two, it's among the smaller companies in Harland. Uh, revenue is growing up and 86% of all tenders invitation received were completed of which 45% tenders were successful. So 86% of the tenders you were in, 86% uh, tenders invitation received were completed. And of that 45% were successful. And the examining team is telling us this is better than the last year. So the percentage of successful tenders are better than the last year. These are all very positive signs for Rodnim. You can see the blue arrow, the red arrow. Profit is drifting. The profit margin is going down and the net promoter score is down, which are, which are present challenges for Rodnim to survive in the competitive environment. Your net promoter score is a very important indicator and your net promoter score is going down. So probably the feedback, there is some concern, some feedbacks coming from your clientele. And probably there could be an exhibit on the day of exam, which tells us about some of the issues which your client must have faced uh, once they have hired you as an event management company, because your net promoter score has gone down sharply over the last three years and could be a concerning factor for Amanda and Sefi. Number fourth, number, sorry, second last. Rodnim does not have any formal cooperations uh, or informal cooperations or collaboration arrangements in place with other businesses as the partner wish to preserve Rodnim independence. Now, that's their ideology. They want to preserve Rodnim independence. I don't believe this is a good ideology moving forward. They need to break this ideology sooner. We have read in the pre-scene uh, that there is a lot of trend of cooperation and collaboration among smaller businesses. We have also read in the pre-scene that larger businesses do not do collaboration. They work independently. But the smaller business, which holds 26 version market share, they have a lot of tendency to do collaborations and cooperations and supporting one another, uh, having referral arrangements, reciprocal arrangements. And currently, Rodnim is not part of it. So do you believe this is the high time Amanda and Sefi should think about cooperations and collaborations, reciprocal agreements, referral arrangements with, with the other smaller companies? So do you believe a question or an exhibit around cooperation or collaboration can, um, come, can come in on the day of exam? A certain exhibit giving you information about cooperations and collaborations can come in? Because I think that's, that's one of the most important thing I've read in the pre-scene. Right. So can can there be some sort of a discussion in uh, in on the day of exam that Amanda and Sefi is thinking about a cooperation and collaborations uh, with other smaller companies or any reciprocal agreements or any referral agreements? Right. So there could be some discussions where we need to uh, where we need to perform some like suitability, acceptability and feasibility analysis where we need to consider. Is it a wide? Is it a wide, uh, ideal strategy to grow? Because every strategic choice is to be evaluated, right? So it could be more of a strategic evaluation question in the exam. So where you need to evaluate the strategic option. So can one strategic option in front of Amanda and uh, Sefi be to open up into collaborations and cooperations? Am I right? Should should they break should they break their ideology of preserving Rodnim independence? Should they break their ideology of preserving Rodnim's independence if they want to grow? So can you get a question about evaluating the strategic options? And one of the strategic options you can be evaluating in exam could be collaborations, cooperations. Right? Next, last one. Rodnim has built up its business around corporate and private clients. Now, my concern here is when, when I read the pre-scene, uh, they have built their business around 
corporate clients, which is very good. We we know corporate clients uh, is like 73% of the market share, uh, if you've seen the pre-seen information. And corporate clients have the biggest stay uh, in the uh, event management industry. So I think that from that angle, it's very good. But the private clients is the issue. The private clients is hardly 4%. And even it was written in the pre-scene that there is not much growth we have seen in private clients over the last few years. So I think uh, what Rodnim has to do is they need to move away from private clients and they need to explore the public sector. Have you seen the growth in the public sector? Even the examining team was telling us that there has been quite a significant growth in the last three to four years in the public sector uh, and the events being arranged from the public sector and the number of events which are being arranged through the public sector, including the virtual events coming from the public sector. So I think uh, public sector holds 23% of the total pie chart, if I'm not wrong, if you see the pre-scene actually. 23% share uh, of the total market is held by public sector. And Rodnim is not currently into public sector. So can that be a second strategic evaluation to look into the public sector? Should they open up into the public sector? Should they try finding clients into the public sector? Should they make inroads into the public sector? Okay, so I, I just try building up some of my perspective here. Uh, just one minute. Okay, I hope you can see a Word file on your screen now. And on this Word file, you can see some likely questions on your screen, which I will build up with you in the session. Number one, we came across that we might get a question on a strategic evaluation around uh, collaborations or cooperations or some reciprocal agreements with the smaller businesses. Some reciprocal agreements. I think that's one case because currently they have their ideology of preserving Rodnim independence. So they need to break that, come out of it. Number two, what we're thinking about uh, is th the public sector. Uh, inroads, inroads into the public sector. So do you all agree currently uh, Rodnim does not have any public sector clients? They only have the private sector and the corporate sector. And that's what is written in the pre-scene. So this, can, can they think about the public sector? Is this something attractive? Inroads into the public sector, having 23%, having 23% of the total market, of the total event, event management market share. So 23% of the business uh, in the event management industry comes from uh, the public sector, and that is given in the exam paper that the public sector is growing. So we need to be very alert with that. So I think that's the second thing Amanda and Sefi need to consider beside cooperation and collaboration, giving up their ideology. So giving up their ideology of preserving uh, Rodnim independence. So they need to give up this if they want to grow for future and they need to seriously look into uh, they need to seriously look into the public sector. They need to get into the public sector. They need to take clients from the public sector. That's what they need to do sooner before uh, things get worse for them. So I think these are two very important things before we keep building up upon our discussion. This is just the very initial start of the discussion. Uh, a lot of more things will come your way till the time we make a very good summary at the end of the day. So is everyone clear with this particular slide in front of you? Um, is, is it the present Is it the present of Rotnim? Is it where they are currently? So currently, they don't have any cooperations and collaborations. Currently, they are into the private clients and the corporate sector. 
Currently, uh, some of the things are going down for them. Some of the things are going up for them. They started six years ago and they're among the smaller companies. So what lesson we have for Amanda and Sefi looking at this slide? Uh, I think this slide is telling us that Amanda and Sefi should look into collaborations and corporations as a mode to grow. There is an article growing in partnership. I hope you know about that article, right? Not a new one. Uh, growing in partnership. That article looks very important because there is the perspective of growing in partnership if you look at the second last bullet. And they're into private clients. Uh, are private clients attractive? They're not. They're just having 4% of the market share. And it is very clearly written in the pre-scene that the, there has not been any growth in the private clients. So probably leaving the private clients, uh, the time you're spending on the private clients, just leave it out and start focusing on the public sector. I think that's what Amanda and Sefi should be doing. Okay, should Amanda and Sefi be concerned about the NPS going down? Can there be any specific exhibit in the exam paper which tells us what's the reason why we're getting negative feedbacks? So could, could there be any negative feedback related exhibit or some, some criticism from the client which you need to deal with? So I probably believe the NPS going down, we can expect something around that as well. But they, again, these are just uh, hypothetical thinkings. Uh, I hope you can see the word file again. NPS down. Uh, any specific uh, issues given? Any specific issues given on day of exam about the negative feedback? Negative feedback from existing clients about recent events being not not properly organized, not properly organized by Rodnam. So some recent events not properly organized by Rodnam and negative feedback because their NPS is down. What are underlying reasons of NPS is down is not given in the pre-scene. So there could be a potential development on, on the exam day in an exhibit where some weaknesses, some uh, issues, some negative criticism is coming from your clients about some recent events being organized by Rodnam and you might need to investigate uh, the underlying causes, etc. So something around that. I hope you're clear with that, right? Whatever I'm writing will be shared with you, so don't be worried about it. Just keep a focus on what I'm telling you. Okay, moving on into uh, Rodnim, the event management company, and looking at the present side of it, it's not the end of the story. Is everyone clear with the six bullets on your screen before we move on into the further present analysis of Rodnim? Everyone clear with this? Okay, moving on. Further information about Rodnim. When I was reading the uh, human resources, and I, when I was re reading the staff uh, they have, I think they have 34 staff in total. Uh, and oh, definitely Amanda and Sefi is the managing partners. And they have three managers. One of the manager, uh, which is working under Amanda and Sefi, was Dika Nikosi. Uh, is a 22-year-old and a recent graduate in event management. Heads the business support, looking after following key areas, which includes event coordination and event delivery. So Dika is a 22-year-old recent graduate. She is one of the manager, and she is looking after event coordination and delivery. Project management and event risk management. Considering the net promoter score is down and the net promoter score has to do something with the feedback and the feedback around the event delivery or event coordination, uh, we could raise some concerns on Dika being a recent graduate in event management. She's one of the manager, right? Yeah, so does Dika, 22-year-old, a recent graduate, has some sort of a connection with NPS, all of you? Uh, Pooja is all, already confirming, yes, it has a connection. Do you all agree that the first statement, the first bullet on your screen, has some sort of a connection with NPS? Again, that is just an assumption, right? Now, whatever we're discussing in a pre-scene is not a, a, a rule-based approach. It's just a perspective-based approach, right? Now, just look at the bullet number two. Dika, 
A recent graduate in event management has formal education. No doubt about that. She has a formal education. She is a graduate in event management, but lack experience, lack practical experience because she's a recent graduate compared to his colleagues. His responsibility includes uh, event risk management and project managers are demanding uh, for someone new to the field. So do you believe she has the, she has the education but she does not have the experience. And probably that becomes a concerning factor with the types of the task she is looking into. Considering the net promoter score is down, uh, we need to critically evaluate Dika and his role in the key functions. Right, is everyone clear? So can, can we have something of this net promoter score uh, connected to the role of Dika as well? slash the role of Dika, the recent graduate, and looking after event delivery and event management. So she's looking after the event delivery and just one minute, I'm missing one thing important from here, event uh, coordination and delivery, sorry, event coordination and delivery, event delivery and event coordination. So probably there is some sort of a connection between Dika and probably that's one of the reason why it's given in the pre-scene that Dika is a recent graduate. So we can have some concerns on her role considering she is looking into some very challenging task. Uh, though she is a graduate, which is good, but her lack of experience is raising some question marks here. I hope you're all clear with that perspective. Okay, moving backwards to the last point from uh, Rodnim. Okay, Rodnim employs temporary staff to support events as and when needed. Did you, did you all read that when you were going through the pre-scene, particularly the information about human resources that they do employ temporary staff when needed? Can, can this be a concerning factor for the net promoters going da down that your temporary staff was not up to date? They were not very really well trained to the policies and procedures of Rodnim. Probably they made a mistake at the event. Uh, what about health and safety, which is a very concerning factor, even if you look at the risk given in the scenario, the risk register, even if you look at the uh, industry body, uh, the industry body is very much concerned about health and safety. Health and safety is one of the major risk of the industry, even given in the scenario. So do you believe that the temporary staff, while employing temporary staff offer flexibility for managing peak workloads? I'm reading the last bullet. Rodnim events must address several challenges. Ensuring temporary staff comply with health and safety regulation and the labor laws of Heartland. The risk of staff not showing up or leaving early would affect your NPS. So I probably believe that temporary staff can also be connected to uh, the NPS because uh, they are casual workers. They, they might not show up. They might not be motivated much. Uh, they might not be very much blended with the policies and procedures or the laws and regulations of the Harland event management industry. So when, when you are taking up the temporary staff, it's very good because it's managing your workload. But you need to look at the pros and cons. So work temporary work working staff do have an advantage, but also have a disadvantage, right? So we are looking into the disadvantage side. So temporary workers can also be linked with uh, the NPS going down or the temporary workers for events. That could be the second issue why your NPS is going down, at least from the pre-scene, at least from the pre-scene. There could be other factors too. Is everyone clear with that perspective? The temporary workers uh, is good from one side, but bad from the other side. Uh, Dika, she's good from one side, being a, uh, being a graduate in the event management industry, but her lack of experience is making uh, the disadvantage of this particular person. So this is my present analysis about Rodname. Now, if you are Amanda or Sefi and you're sitting back running the business, you know about Dika, 
you know about temporary staff, you know about your performances going up and down, you know about your ideology of preserving Rodnam independence, you know about that you're not dealing with public sector, you know about that you, you were established six years ago, and you know about your market share. Now, knowing all this and knowing your present where we are, let's move on. So is everyone clear with this scenario? Where we are, the present analysis of the company, is everyone sure of the present analysis? Okay, now let's move on. Now, when once we know our present, what we need to do? The next thing we need to do is, once we know our capabilities, once we know our, uh, once we know our strengths and weaknesses, this is what we need to do. Where we, where we want to be, where Amanda and Sefi wants to be uh, in the next three years, and how will they go to get there? Uh, will they do collaborations? Will they do cooperations? What will they do? Uh, will they do any strategic uh, alliances, any joint ventures? I think that was written in the pre-scene that uh, it's very common to do strategic uh, alliances and joint ventures with uh, complementary businesses like security businesses, uh, like the event, event, uh, the event places. You can do some strategic alliance with the event places, some joint ventures with event places. So th there is a tendency of even joint ventures and strategic alliances given in the pre-scene debrief, not just cooperations and collaborations. So that article growing in partnership from every angle is important. So where they want to go, how to get there, what are opportunities ahead uh, of this company and what are strategic choices? Is, is this the right perspective what Amanda and Sefi should be having in mind after looking at the present side of the business? Is that what Amanda and Sefi should be thinking today after looking at the present analysis? So let's open up this discussion and let's see what sort of things they have in front of them uh, to make their business more successful. Okay, first of all, I have put the strategic aims and these are strategic aims which are coming from the pre-scene themselves. I'm just copy pasted them here. Can you see the four strategic aims? I hope you've read them when you were going through the pre-scene. Explore and exploit new business opportunities. They should. Uh, they're in dire need of that. Uh, they need to break their ideology of preserving Rodnim independence if they want to explore and exploit new business opportunities. Do you believe collaborations and cooperations is a new business opportunity? Be quick in answering to me. Do you believe uh, cooperations and collaborations with other smaller companies is an, is an exploiting new business opportunities? Do you believe uh, getting inroads into the public sector is exploiting and exploring new opportunities? Public sector, right? So that's, that's very important. Uh, do you believe they can do some joint ventures or some strategic alliance with complementary businesses like, e like, like the event places or like the security companies? So can they do some strategic alliances with the allied and supported industry with complementary businesses, which supports the event management, right? Was it given in the scenario? Yes. Embrace and utilize innovative technologies. They currently have a lot of technologies. If you have read their information system very well, they even have a good ticketing system. They even have a management information system. They have a lot of good systems in place. So I, what I believe is that Amanda and Sefi has put technology at work. But is there any opportunity in technology? Can they bring uh, artificial intelligence and data analytics uh, into reading uh, information, into reading data, into analyzing data, uh, into getting insights of the future trends of this industry? Was something about artificial intelligence given in the pre-scene as, as about the future developments? Yes. Currently, I think what I have read about, um, uh, uh, about Rodnim, even though they have a lot of information system, uh, there was no terminology like AI or data analytics in any of the systems. They, they do have a website. Uh, we can think about uh, further upgrading the website. Uh, they, they are doing uh, marketings and they do have a social media presence. But we can think about uh, the e-marketing. We can think about upgrading the e-marketing. Uh, I'm not saying they're not doing e-marketing. I'm saying they should upgrade their e-marketing. Number three, encourage an open, respectful, and an ethical business culture. 
So can can they get into cooperations and collaborations that will open up the respectful and ethical business culture? Cooperate with other business, collaborate with other business, get, get along with other business rather than having your independence as your priority. So they need to open up, right? And lastly, operate in a sustainable, envi environmental sustainable manner. We have some KPIs around uh, sustainability in the scenario, but not much sustainable information is given to us. What, what I believe uh, as a tutor, I do foresee a particular exhibit about sustainability practices in event management industry coming on the day of exam. Because when I researched Google, and when I researched Google around operate in an environmental sustainable manner, I was just amazed to get uh, get loads of information about how the event management industry is translating into eco, eco or sustainable practices, how they're ensuring uh, uh, they are a sustainable business on the environment side. And some of the KPIs are given to you in the pre-scene, which I will be utilizing and putting a very important case study in front of you in the next 30 minutes, where I believe something around sustainability, something around sustainable practices and how Rodnim can make use of them or how Rodnim can uh, better utilize them for their repute, for their market standing and establish a brand image. Right, so probably Rodnim can do some sustainable practices, stand out in the market, show show the clients that we are a very good company in terms of sustainable practices, and they can really get a good market share as well. Right, so one of their strategic aim is to operate in a sustainable manner, right? But no information is given to us about that. So on a day of exam, you might get an exhibit where something about sustainability, something about what Amanda and Sefi is thinking about sustainable business practices, what should, what should they do for a sustainable business practices can come on the day of exam. Because one of their strategic objective is around that. Is everyone clear? So can we get some specific exhibit on uh, operate in an environment sustainable manner on the day of exam? So please assure you know the aims because something around aims Something uh, connecting with aims can come on the day of exam. So look at the four aims and be sure you know these four aims. Now, when I look at these four aims and I look at the opportunities we have in industry, see how I will make a connection. When I read the pre-scene and when I read uh, information about the event management industry, I got to know some opportunities which Amanda and Sefi can make use of. Number one, Corporate clients continue to dominate the industry. No doubt about that. It's given in the scenario. Same situation for many years, and it's not expected to change significantly in future. This is what the examining team is telling us, that the corporate clients continue to dominate the event management market. And this situation is the same for the last many years and will continue to be the same in the future. So they have 73% stake in the market, corporate clients. So uh, is Rodnim focused on corporate clients? Currently, yes. But they probably should broaden their focus on corporate clients. They should uh, broaden their focus of successful tenders more because only the corporate client gives the tender, right? Corporate clients give us the tenders. They invite us to tenders, not the private clients. So should they broaden their focus on corporate clients? Should they increase the percentage success of tenders they're winning? Currently, the tenders they've won was better than the last year. But can they improve upon that? Because the more you grab the corporate clients, the better market share you can have. So they should look into developing something new for the corporate clients. They should amaze the corporate clients. They can develop a niche market. They can come into sustainable practices. They can start using re, uh, the recycling materials or they start focusing on waste disposal. They start focusing on use of less plastics. They start focusing on something which can amaze the corporate clients that we have to give the tender to Rotnim. So do something different. Be different. So I think the differentiation strategy can come from operate in an environmental sustainable manner. So I think sustainability can give them the differentiation which can help win more tenders in future. 
So again, differentiation strategy be uh, be something good for Rodnim. Can they focus on a differentiation strategy, bring sustainable practices into business? Next question. Can uh, Rodnim use Can you, Rodnim use sustainable practices to distinguish itself from others to get a better market share or percentage of tenders they are winning from corporate clients? Right? So can, can, can they create a differentiation? differentiate and lead differentiate and lead so can can sustainability practices become a differentiator factor in exam paper because uh, i think there there is a space of some information coming around sustainable practices on the day of exam what i believe because we know sbl examining team is very much focused on environment and sustainability practices. That's one of their favorite area. And we know a lot of things is being developed by ACC around sustainable practices. That's quite an in thing in ACCA. So can sustainable practices be used as a differentiator factor, all of you? So that's, that's how they can uh, get inroads into the corporate clients, right? Okay, moving further. Next opportunity, which I read from the pre-scene. Public sector, 23% of the industry income is coming from public sector. Recently, the Harland National Government has engaged several event management businesses to run a series of virtual conferences. Another opportunity, which Amanda and Sefi should think about. They're currently not into the public sector. So they should get inroads into the public sector. They should start uh, engaging with the national government. They should start getting some events from the national government sooner. And they should start thinking about running the virtual conferences. I, I don't think so. I found any information that currently um, Rodnim is running any virtual conferences. You might get that on the day of exam. But currently in the pre-scene, I didn't read anywhere that Rodnim is running any virtual conferences. So I think even virtual conferences or hybrid conferences uh, can be another opportunity which Amanda and Sefi should look into. And more importantly, getting into the Harland National Government. They should start getting some business from Harland National Government as soon as possible. Do you think that's important? Do you think that they should start getting any business from the Harland National Government? Should they get some percentage of business from there? Because currently they're not into it. Virtual and the public sector, right? That's that's what should be the other plus point from them. Next, just one minute. Getting back to my Word file quickly. Entering into public sector. That's one of the thinking point plus uh, Entering into the virtual event market. They might do some cooperation and collaboration. There is a possibility that another small player is already doing the virtual conferences and they might engage with him. They might collaborate with him for any virtual events uh, to get, get insight into the virtual event markets, right? So the virtual events and entering into the virtual events they might need to think about that entering into the public sector because not, they're not currently into it. So a lot of opportunities are there, right? I hope you're getting that perspective. Next opportunity, sports events. What I read, sports events. Growth in the last five years. They've grown in the last five years. And currently they are at 12%. When you look at that pie chart of the uh, types of events contributing to the event management industry. And virtual events are becoming popular. Currently, they're 5% when you look at the types of event contributing to the total income. So sports event is something what uh, Rodnim can look into if they're not into it much. They might be into it on the day of exam. But if they're not into it much, they can look for it in future. 
they can uh, because we know even the public sector organize a lot of sports events, a lot of cultural events. They can look into sports events, organizing sports events. They can do some collaborations and cooperations with other smaller businesses who are holding the sports events and even virtual events, which are becoming popular. So when you look at the types of events like conferences and concerts and music concerts and everything, in those types of events, uh, sports events and virtual events were the only two given by the examining team which are growing. If I can show you that, I hope you are clear with it. If I can show you the pre-scene, that these are the only two types of events which are growing. I hope you can see the pre-scene in front of your screen. And this is the information I've taken from the pre-scene. Can, can you see the screen in front of you, the types of events? Types of events. And when I read these type of events, only the sports event and the virtual event, the examining team mentioned, they're becoming popular or they're growing. Music concert, conferences, Festivals, they never use such a terminology. Private events, they never use such a terminology. Rather, for private event, they mention has, uh, has not been any significant growth. So they've given that this is not becoming very attractive. The only two attractive events are sports events and virtual events, which I picked from the pricing. So that could also be something where Rodnim needs to look into for future. More. Clients in Har Harland are increasingly expecting event management businesses to provide creative and innovative ideas to ensure events are well managed and meet specific requirements of the client. Look at this. The client expectations are changing. The client thinking process is changing. They're looking for an event management business who can give them something creative, something innovative, like virtual. They can give them something like eco-sustainable events, events which has less, uh, which has less environmental implications. They can give them like green events. These terms are becoming popular, right? I'll, I'll be showing you that. Just wait for it. Green events, uh, green places where you're holding events, uh, less use of plastic, uh, less use of paper glasses, less use of plastic bottles. Th these are practices which event management industries are taking place globally, ensuring. Uh, the catering, the food, we know a lot of uh, CO2 emission gets, a uh, lot of emission gets out of this catering business uh, and lots of event management companies are engaging very uh, proactively uh, with the catering businesses to ensure that uh, the, uh, the in negative environmental implication coming out of the catering businesses and large, uh, large food tables at event management uh, at event management are going down. So I'll, I'll be showing you the practices that's going on in, in next 10 minutes. But currently look at this point number four, um, creative and innovative ideas. So can Amanda and Sefi think about that? What can make them stand out? What can make them stand out? What creative ideas can they bring in? What innovative ideas can they bring in? Can, can they start entering into more virtual events, more hybrid events, which is the most in thing in the virtu in the industry this this time? Or can they start uh, doing something of eco-sustainable practices just to make them stand out? Look at the red, red point. A professional level of service throughout the event process is also expected. They're also expecting that there will be a professional level of service throughout the event right from the start of the event to the end of the event. And that's where we have some issues. We heard about they had a graduate, a recent graduate, who's looking after the event management and event delivery. A professional level of service throughout the event management process is expected. I hope you've seen in the pre-scene, they've given the, the process of event management uh, on one page. They expect a professional level of service throughout that event management process. That's, that's also what they're expecting as clients. So on, on the day of exam, can you expect that some sort of an issues are given here? If I take you back to the pre-scene, I hope you've seen this event management process given here on one page. This, can you see this event management process uh, given on uh, in your pre-scene? This is how uh, Rodnim has an event management process in place. This is a Rodnim event management process. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can there be any issues in it? 
in, on the day of exam? Can there be any issue in any stage of this process? Quite sure. There could be something in the exhibit that any stage has a weakness. You might be asked that identify the weaknesses in this event management process. So you might need to find the weaknesses in this event management process because at the end of the day, the client is looking for professional services throughout this event management process. And there could be some loopholes, there could be some weaknesses within this event management process, which you look at on your screen. So just be sure of this event initiation, outline planning, detail planning, event organization, event delivery, and post event. Event organization and event delivery, who is into it? Who is into it? Uh, I, I forget the name of that person. I think D D Dika, right? Dika is into it. So can there be certain uh, weaknesses into those uh, second last and third last stages of this event management process? And what is the client looking for? The client is looking for professional services. So can, can you be asked to identify some weaknesses in the event management process at Rodnim? which is given on page number nine of the pre-scene, right? Weaknesses or issues in the event management process given on page nine of the pre-scene, particularly particularly the second and third last of the process where we have connection with, where we have connection with Dika. Okay, page number eight, sorry. Where we have connection with Dika uh, and any, any link with the NPS going down and the net promoter score going down. So there is a possibility that you might need to evaluate the weaknesses or loopholes in the current event management process in place, uh, particularly the third last and the second last stage where we have an association with Dika. Uh, I hope the page number eight is the correct page, right? Because I wrote nine, one student said it's eight. So please be assured that that's the page number eight where that process is given in. Can anyone else please confirm it's page eight? Thank you so much. Okay, that's page eight then, thank you. Okay. Let's just get, get get back to where we were. So uh, the client expectation changing, can that be a source of opportunity for Amanda and Sefi? Do you all agree with that? So can they think about some creative and innovative ideas? Can those creative and innovative ideas be given to you on the day of exam in an exhibit? And you might be asked to evaluate those creative ideas. You might need to be asked to evaluate the suitability, acceptability, and feasibility of those creative ideas, which can help them grow their business. Next, that's not the end of the opportunities. Last, fifth on this part, particular slide, smaller businesses within the industry sometime informally cooperate and collaborate with each other to strengthen their collective bargaining power and position in the market on a reciprocal or a referral basis. We, we already discussed that, right? So can Amanda and Sefi break their ideology of Rodnim independence and look into the number five? Can they, think, uh, can they start thinking about collaborations for virtual events, for sports events? Can they start going into the collaborations for the sake of broadening their market share? for the strategic aim, encourage an open, respectful, and ethical business culture. For the, for the sake of the strategic aim, can they look into the number five, right? We've already talked about that. Okay, further opportunities. Formal strategic alliances and joint venture agreements also exist in the sector but these tend to be in a complementary, rather competitive business. So in complementary businesses, you do have strategic alliances and joint venture. You're not doing a strategic alliances with your competitor. It says rather than competitive businesses. So you're not doing a strategic alliance with another event management company, not at all, but you're doing strategic alliances and joint venture with complementary businesses. I hope you're getting the difference, right? So you're doing it with the complementary businesses like security companies, like the event places, 
the places where you hold events or any catering services, any decoration services, any 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 organization providing you the technological support. You're doing strategic alliances with those. You're not doing strategic alliances with competitive business. So can Amanda and Sefi think about those strategic alliances and joint venture? In, with, with the complementary industry? So growing in partnership, is that is that an important article? Uh, can they think about strategic alliances? Uh, strategic alliance or a JV, a joint venture with complementary businesses. And I, I believe, I believe uh, that this complementary businesses, considering we were discussing about sustainable and eco practices, and we were discussing about virtual events. So in, in my mindset, uh, with complementary businesses, examples could include uh, technological companies, which can give you support for the virtual events, technological companies giving support for virtual events, or probably companies like the companies engage in recycling, recycling of waste. Because if you want to establish your differentiation factors into eco practices, you probably might need to collaborate with uh, complementary businesses uh, around event management who are giving you eco practices like uh, companies offering you recycling of waste or companies offering you green places to uh, run event, green places to run events. Uh, you know what green places are? The green places are the event places which uh, have less uh, carbon emissions. Uh, they use the solar, solar lighting or any lighting source which is not polluting the environment. Uh, the public uh, they use cycles to reach the event places. This this trend has become very common in Europe and America that they're using they're giving cycles to the attendees. They don't allow the transport to come into a, at a certain place. So they either allow you to come through the public transport to the event place, or they allow you to come through the cycles to the public place, or they're running vehicles with eco-friendly fuels to come at the conference place. They're not allowing you to use your public uh, your private cars at the conference place. So even such practices are coming in, like sustainable transportation. Sustainable transportations are coming in. So green places to run events, you can do some sort of collaborations with them uh, in terms of establishing your differentiation factor. Now, this is just my thought process. Are you all clear with it? So lots of thoughts of questions are coming already down. Uh, another opportunity, development in technology, it's given in the pre-scene, includes the provision of internet-enabled live streaming of events is used when managing virtual events. Uh, so you can do some collaborations or joint ventures with uh, companies offering live streaming of events uh, because you might be new as Rodnam. So Rodnam might be new into this, so they can do some strategic alliances with uh, companies offering live streaming of events because virtual events for sure can strike any exhibit on the day of exam because virtual event is the big thing in the event management industry and uh, something around virtual event for sure will come in. So probably uh, Rodnim entering the virtual event, doing some strategic alliance into it or probably Amanda and Sefi considering uh, a strategic choice of entering into virtual events running virtual events. So developments in technology. So they might need to invest into it. Uh, already, they're very friendly for technology. A lot of information system in place at uh, Rodnim. So I don't think so. Amanda and Sefi are barriers to technology. Uh, they're very proactive to technology if I look at their information systems. So probably Amanda and Sefi would be very proactive and they're looking into the live streaming of events. They might be looking to invest into it uh, for the future of their business. Artificial intelligence can be used by event management business to in interrogate or analyze data to identify patterns and trends which are likely to become the trends of future. So uh, the event management companies might have a lot of data with them uh, about the clients that they, uh, they've engaged uh, over the last six years. They might be having a lot of data to explore, to interrogate using artificial intelligence and data analytics. 
So I've already given data analytics and artificial intelligence as key articles to read because, you know, this is at the end of the day, a favorite area of your examining team asking questions around data analytics and benefits and use of AIs. So probably Amanda and Sefi needs to think about using data analytics to investigate or interrogate their data. How can they get benefit out of the data they already have over the last six years? How can they use this data for predicting trends uh, or in building the customer relationship management because the net promoter score is down and they need something on the side of the customer relationship management. And probably the data analytics can give them the edge into the customer relationship management by identifying trends and behaviors of customers. So what I believe here in my next question could be uh, how use of data analytics by Rodnim can give them a better customer relationship management. I hope you're getting my point here, all of you. When you, when you analyze the data, you get to know the behaviors of the customers and the clients. You get to know the patterns of customers and clients. You can interrogate them. Uh, you can interrogate the feedback. You can interrogate the underlying reasons. So data analytics can really give you a visual graphical representation of where is the problem, how you can address the problem, and how can you improve upon your customer relationship management considering your net promoter score is down. Navigation systems. Help people attending an event find the venue using their own smart devices and mapping apps. So you, you can build up a navigation system. Currently, what I've read on Rodnim, Rodnim do have that ticketing system and the QR codes. Uh, but Rodnim does not have a navigation system in place. So they can build upon this navigation system uh, that can give a lot of uh, good to the client and the customers attending the events. So they can easily find the venue. They can easily navigate the venue uh, using their own smart devices and mapping apps. So they, they can think about investing on navigation systems because currently they don't have it. So look at these opportunities. It is a prosperous industry. Uh, Amanda and Sefi need to think where they are. What are the ground realities for Rodnim? What are the strengths and weaknesses of Rodnim? And considering this is an opportunity, an opportunistic industry, Amanda and Sefi need to give a breakthrough to Rodnim. And in terms of giving a breakthrough, they need to explore these opportunities which are in front of your screen. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. The numbering is wrong. So the nine opportunities. Nine opportunities and look at your aims. Explore and exploit new business. Link link those opportunities with your aims. Embrace new technology. Look at look at the point number six and seven and eight. Doesn't it match your strategic aim of embrace and utilize new technology? Look at point number six, seven, eight. Embracing and utilizing innovative technologies. Are you clear? So point number six, seven, eight goes with embrace and utilize innovative technologies. Point number five on your screen goes with the third strategic aim, encourage open, respectful, and ethical business culture, enter into strategic alliances and joint venture, and operate in an environmental sustainable manner. Uh, wherever you bring technology, automatically you have a connection of technology with environment. But we didn't found much of environment into any of these opportunities very specifically. So that's that's what I believe a specific information on a day of exam in an exhibit could come in. Okay, now from opportunities, let's look into the threats. What are challenges? What are threats? Because no industry can be without it. If uh, event management industry is prosperous, it's growing, they have opportunities. On the other side around, they do have threats given in the pre-scene. So Amanda and Sefi needs to be very concerned about it. Number one, it's a competitive industry. We know there are lots of national and international companies in Harlan. They have a market share, a lot of rivalry in that market share. Four companies holding 74 and the other, uh, numerous other companies holding 26 percent. So I think a lot of tussle and fight is going on in that 26 percent market share. So it's a competitive industry. So Amanda and Sefi needs to act quickly, decisively. If they're not acting quickly and decisively, they might lose their market share. Threat of a new entrant is high. We already discussed that at the beginning of the session because it's a prosperous industry. So anyone can come in. 
Uh, the setting up cost is very low, so probably that increased the risk of threat of a new entrant as high. Bargaining power of customer is high because customers can switch from one event management company to another, whichever is giving them good service, creative service, innovative service, best service. So any any one can uh, a customer can jump to anyone. There is a tender process, so that's very uh, critical because uh, if you want to win tender, you need to ensure that you have creative and innovative solutions in place because in future, you cannot win tenders without creative and innovative solution because that's the expectation of the client. So I think the bargaining power of the customer is high. They can switch from you to another very quickly. High level of inflations that's given in the scenario, in the threats, high level of inflations within Harlan, increasing interest rates in Harlan. That's given. And they've given that this is happening in Harlan. High level of inflation in Harlan. That would definitely dent uh, the event management business. That would definitely dent the revenue prospects from event management business uh, because high level of inflation will keep your revenue down, will your fees income down. High interest rates. And in, in all that cases, probably the virtual event starts looking better. So virtual events in the bracket is, is a thought process, which I believe can go against high level of inflation and increasing interest rates. So virtual event becomes important. Uh, Suffer so, so one, uh, even though I, uh, I said not to ask questions in between, but how bargaining power of customer is high? D doesn't customers have a lot of choices to switch? Is there only one event management company in Harlan? Is there only one uh, event management company in Harlan? No. So do, do they have choices? So when customer have choices, isn't the bargaining power of customer high? Isn't that the simple rule? Okay, please. Now, please hold your questions. So do you believe virtual events can be a good uh, breakthrough considering uh, the, the present high level of inflation in Harland and increasing interest rates? Yes, definitely the increasing interest rates can add to your gaining risk. Uh, we don't know about the, 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 the amount of loans or gearing could be a specific information given to you on the day of exam about the gearing side or the liquidity side of this business. But increasing interest rates could challenge uh, Rodnim, particularly if they want to get to a bank loan for expansions, for any strategic choices. They want to get a bank loan, so they need to think about it twice because the interest rates are rising. So that will badly dent their profitability margins. The profitability margins are already down. So considering the rising interest rate could have a big risk on your profit margins as well. So virtual events looks better because they're more uh, cost friendly to be managed and arranged. Secondly, reduction in predictability of, sorry, reduction in prediction, predictability of weather increased awareness of environmental impact of events. So this is happening. This is another factor given in the pre-scene that there is reduction in, in the predictability of weather. You can't predict weather. Uh, the global warming, weather patterns are changing. Uh, so unusual weather patterns can really affect your uh, outdoor events, your physical events. So probably with those... Uh, uh, weather patterns changing at an alarming scale at a global level, virtual conferences, virtual events are becoming more popular because at least they have no connection with events, uh, with the weather events. So probably if you're thinking about a physical event or an outdoor event, you need to think about the weather patterns as well. Increased awareness of environmental impact on EV. So the people in Harlan are becoming aware of environmental impacts. So in future... They might be choosing an event management company which is portraying or which is selling the eco-management practices. So that is my reason that Amanda and Sefi needs to think about eco-management practices because the customers are becoming aware of the environmental impact. Look at the bullet number five. So if the customer are aware, will they be choosing an event management company which is against environment, which is damaging environment? So please think about these threats and how these threats can become questions in exam paper. So again, virtual events or eco practices uh, can be the next big thing in exam paper. 
something about virtual events, something about eco practices, because there is already a growing awareness among customers. And the weather is becoming unpredictable. Increase health and safety legislations. Uh, worried about the temporary staff hiring. So if you're hiring the temporary staff, you need to train them on health and safety legislations. Because if you are, if they're unaware of the health and safety legislations, they might do something which might dampen your reputation as Rodnim. So there is an increased health and safety legislations in Harland. You need to be worried about that as Rodnim. Increased data security and protections in Harland. Uh, I hope you've heard, read in the pre-scene that Rodnim is using off-site storage facility. Am I correct? In their MIS, I think in their information system, MIS, they were using off-site storage facility. So increased data security and protection. They need to be alert about that. They need to be concerned about that. Off-site storing facility is more like a cloud computing. It's like a branch of cloud computing. So cloud computing could be important. Uh, the drawbacks of cloud computing could be important on the day of exam. Increased data security and protection could be important in exam. Cyber security could be important in exam. They're using a lot of information technology. They're using websites. They're using off-site off storage facility. So be concerned about the technological risk which are developing in Harland. Stringent employee rights. Worried about the temporary staff hiring. Uh, what are employee rights for the temporary staff uh, how would uh, Rodnim ensure the temporary staff hiring is ethical? Uh, how would Rodnim ensure that the temporary staff are aware of the em employee rights or about health and safety legislations? So I think though they have only 34 employees, shouldn't be a big factor, but the temporary staff and engaging temporary staff with increased health and safety legislations or stringent employee rights could be important. Increased risk of cyber attacks. A lot of systems been used by Rodnim. The Rodnim should be concerned about the cyber attacks uh, issues. Uh, they have websites. They have a lot of information systems being used in place. They have an off-site storage facility. So that is also given in the scenario. Unauthorized selling of even tickets. They need to be concerned about that. Though they have the QR-based ticketing system, uh, which is already in place in Rodnim. So probably would not be much of an issue. But they need to be think about the practices of unauthorized ticket sellings, which would definitely dent their fee income prospects. Advances in technology need to develop live streaming and virtual events. So another threat developing is advancements in technology. So any business who keeps themselves up with advancement will survive. Any business who does not keep themselves up to advancements will not survive. So Amanda and Sefi need to seriously look into advances in technology, needs to advance invest in advancement in technology, but they need to consider the, the risk of high inflation, the risk of high interest rates. They need to think about the awareness rising for environmental issues and all such things. Look at the list of threats, absorb it for five minutes. Just read through the list. So these are scattered uh, issues or scattered threats, which I found in uh, the pre-seen case, mostly given us under the threats mostly given to us on the risk, sorry. Yeah, the, uh, the artificial intelligence is at the early stage, uh, Emmet, even within the industry, it's at the early stage. So there is a prospects of that growing. We know a AI, uh, even if you look at the global landscape in 2024, uh, AI is still making inroads. No industry is at perfection to that. No particular business is at perfection to that. So probably that's a growing area where Rodnim uh, as well as the industry could benefit. So is everyone clear what Amanda and Sefi should think about the opportunities and threats when they are looking into the future prospects of the business, looking at the threats landscape and the opportunistic landscape? Clear? Okay. Okay, finally, towards few of the important things, and uh, I need to discuss sustainability because to me that is something very important. I need just to make my students very well aware of sustainability in the event management industry. 
uh, because I believe some sort of information could be there on the day of exam around it. Uh, KPIs given to us in the uh, pre-scene, the financial KPIs on the left, fee income growth, uh, the increase in the amount of fees generated over a given period. Uh, look at the brew. This is positive over the last three years, at least uh, in terms of the financial KPI, uh, Rodnim is good. The second financial KPI is operating profit margin. Uh, Rodnim is not very good into it because there is a down drift in their operating profit margin. So in one financial KPI, they're good. On the second, they're not. Non-financial KPIs. Uh, I've, I've put a mnemonic for non-financial KPIs for you to remember in exam. That is TEC, tech. T stands for tender. E stands for environment. And C stands for client satisfaction. So three non-financial KPIs. Let's first look at the tender. Tender success rates. Uh, that has been better for Rodnim because the tender success rate is better in 20x3 versus 20x2. That's given in the scenario. Client satisfaction, that's a concern factor for Rodnim. The net promoter score has gone down, and that's a worrying. And we've already discussed lots of facts about it in the in the in the discussion today. Environmental sustainability, less information given to us in the pre scene about this, and that's that's where I am concerned that a specific exhibit could pop in on the day of exam. There is a hint. Environmental sustainability and the KPIs around environmental sustainability are around three given by the examining team. Number one, percentage waste recycling. And we know waste recycling is becoming a very in thing in this, in this event management industry. I'll just give you a thought process on that. Water consumption, that's also becoming an in thing in the event management industry. And energy efficiency. When you're holding events, what is the energy consumption? Three things. So probably the exhibit uh, on sustainability, uh, on the day of exam could be around three. Number one, water. Number two, around energy. Number three, around waste. So water, waste, energy. So it's that's WWE, water, waste, energy. Now, there could be some specific information about how Rodnim can establish uh, eco-friendly practices around WWE or what Amanda and Sefi should do for WWE. They might be doing something which we don't know until we go to the day of exam and we get to know that Amanda and Sefi is already doing something for WWE, or they might be standing at zero and they want to do something for it just to make a differentiation factor. So just be prepared uh, uh, something around sustainability, something around eco practices in line with the non-financial KPI. So how many non-financial KPIs they have? Three, TEC, tender, environment, client satisfaction. On tender, they're good. On client satisfaction, they're bad. And on environment, no information is given. But the strategic aim of Rodnim also includes working for environment. So in line with that, probably Amanda and Sefi will be proactive uh, towards uh, going into the eco-friendly practices and creating a good name for Rodnim among all other businesses and getting a good number of clients in future from the public sector and the corporate sector. Now, environmental sustainability is becoming a buzzword in the event management industry. I was doing a research on Google a few days ago about how uh, event management industry is, is bringing uh, environmental sustainability into place how the landscape is changing for the event management industry. And I got some amazing facts, which I could share with you uh, just for the sake of broadening your mindset. We are just sharing this information so that you know something better before you enter the exam hall. Uh, will all of you remember the WWE? Will you all remember the three, three non-financial KPIs, which could come broadly on exam site? Water, waste, and energy, right? Okay, now just let's move on. And I'm making a case for sustainable practices in the next 10 minutes before we take the last perspective of this pre scene. Why am I making a case for sustainable practices? I've already given you my basis. Uh, we have a non-financial KPI around it. We have a strategic aim around it. And the event management industry uh, in 2024 is very proactively working for sustainable practices. And there are just glimpses of that somewhere scattered on the 12 pages of the pre-scene given to you. The virtual events becoming in, 
is probably because of this sustainable practices. Uh, so lots of things can go around it. Let's see what we need to discuss. Shift towards virtual and hybrid events focused on eco-friendly practices is what Rodnim needs to think about if they want to make a differentiation with other competitors in the hardland event management industry. Okay, shift towards sustainable practices, right? Uh, information about non-financial KPIs given to you in uh, in, in the pre-scene, which we just discussed, the WWE. Changing trends in the event management industry, the shifting from uh, the physical events to the virtual events. Virtual events are getting popular, even the hybrid events, that certain proportion will be physical, certain will be hybrid, or people can also attend uh, it online as well as uh, it's been going on physically. We know ACC is also doing a lot of hybrid events, engaging members across the world, just like I attend so many virtual conferences of ACCA, which are physical in a certain country, but virtual for others. So you get a lot of participation globally. Uh, the recent focus on public sector around virtual conferences, we saw that the public sector, the government of Harland is doing a lot of virtual conferences. So I think that's, that's where things are starting to change. When the government starts to get into something, uh, it, it do creates a paradigm shift. So the public sector is coming into the virtual conferences as well. So probably will make a shift in Harland towards virtual conferences. Advancement in AIs, uh, live streaming technology is making the shift easier. A lot of AI coming in, a lot of live streaming coming in, people using a lot of virtual conferences, even like Zoom. Currently, I'm also using it for my pre-scene debrief. These are making things easier that you can engage with lots of audience with less uh, footprint, with less uh, damage to the environment. Focus by IEO, which is the industry body given in the pre-scene. The IEO aims to improve the quality, health, and safety and environmental practices of all its members by setting common technical standards. So IEO, which is the industry body running the event management industry in Harlan, they're also thinking about uh, environmental practicing. They're also thinking about setting some technical standards on it. So they might they might want to see environmental practicing uh, practices being uh, uh, established at a larger scale in the Harland industry. So lots of points in the scenario are going around shift towards sustainable practices. Uh, KPIs, non KPIs, sorry, non financial KPIs. Number one, changing trends in the industry, virtual events becoming more common. Public sector going into the virtual events, advancement of AIs and live streamings, and the IEO also want to make some standards, industry-wide standards on environmental practices. So for that reason, uh, information around sustainable practices on the day of exam with Amanda and Sefi thinking about it, how they can jump into it, could become very critical. Amanda and Sefi needs to think uh, to enter the shift quickly. The shift is taking place, no doubt about that, but uh, how would Amanda and Sefi be part of the shift? Look at this. Uh, can you see this picture on your screen for five minutes or two minutes? If you can read it out, can, can is it readable to all of you? Can you read the picture and understand? Okay, I'm giving you five minutes. Just read and understand, and then I'll ask you some questions. Read from the start, right? Uh, United Business Life, read from there going downwards. Can you getting, uh, are you getting the perspective uh, that having a face-to-face -face meeting, a three-day conference in New York, as compared to doing that three-day conference virtually, how much saving has been done? 
The total time of the conference is 27 hours. Whether you do it virtually or you do it physically face to face in New York, they've given you an analysis on the left and the right that when you do a conference in New York, people would come traveling from other cities or other countries. We know there are global conferences where people travel, not just domestic traveling, but international traveling. People will be coming through cars to reach the venue. A uh, lot of hotel needs to be booked up for the guests to stay for a three-day conference. Uh, and, and with hotels, there are sustainability issues. And then the energy, energy that will be used at the three-day conference. We know the three-day conference cannot be run without energy. So look at the environmental implication of a three-day physical conference in New York. Uh, the hoteling, the venue energy, uh, the ground transportations, and the air travel. As against to that, virtual. Now, probably you're all connected with me virtually. What sort of a CO2 emission are we having? Apart from, yes, the electricity we might be using to run this session, the electricity I'm using at home or you are using at home, we don't know from whether they're coming from sustainable means or not. But at least the emission, we're not saying the virtual emission is zero. No, the virtual emission is no zero. It is some. But better than what you do in a three-day physical conference in New York. So is your mindset opening? What's the difference between a physical event and a virtual event? Uh, just to open your mindset, right? Is, is your mindset developing that what are we talking about in terms of Rodnim, what we're talking about in event management industry in Harlan? What are we talking about in terms of a shift from physical events to online events? So do you have transportations in physical events? Do you have hotels and lodgings in a physical event, international conferences? Do you have CO2 emissions coming from venue energy? Do you have air travels or even tra uh, travel by trains, travel by buses? Uh, depends upon how large the conference is. Okay, just let me give you another glimpse of it. Just give me one second. I just want to share something important with you. Just give me one second for that, please. Can you uh, see on your screen a document which is about IMEX, all of you? Okay. Now, this is just an understanding, nothing to be worried about uh, from your exam perspective, but just want to open your minds as my students. If you look at IMEX and you know about what IMEX is, this is about IMEX Frankfurt 2023. Just to tell you what IMEX is and why we are discussing it, uh, can you just read this information in front of your screen in blue here? Just give me one second. Can you just read the blue uh, part under the picture? IMEX Frankfurt is the largest trade show of its kind in Europe. Can you just read those lines quickly? And tell me you have read it. Now, can you think about the environmental implications of holding such large conferences, which do happen at a global level? Can you imagine uh, a conference, uh, an event as large as this, and any event management companies who is behind the scenes holding this, arranging it, uh, making the making the whole setup of IMEX? How much? environmental implications are with it. But they're telling us in this document that how the event management companies holding the IMEX in Frankfurt are trying to reduce the environmental damages. They're telling us 
that they have something around 11,764 participants, 2,900 exhibitors, 3,800 total buyers and 178 press attendees from 20 countries. Then they're telling us on the next page that how they are ensuring that they're meeting their sustainability goals. And some of them are amazing. They're telling us about how they reduced the emissions, uh, how they reduced the waste, how they reduced the water. They're giving all the facts over here. I can share this report with you if you want to read it. Uh, they're telling us right over here that how the venue was made environmental friendly, how the destination was made environmental friendly, how they ensured that the people coming at the airports are transported to the venue through sustainable transportations. They're telling us all such things that they use uh, recyclable papers, they use less flyers, less brochures, uh, less plastic material at the conference, less dis uh, waste at the conference. They're telling us all this here in this document. How they do the waste management, how they ensure that the waste of this conference was disposed of properly, was recycled properly, so on and so forth. But just try to understand that, look at this fact here. They're telling us that the total waste per attendee in 2022 IMEX was 15 kg. They try to reduce that waste per attendee to 12 kg in 2023. So actions are being taken. The event management companies holding global events are very much concerned about the WWE, that is the water, waste and energy. How much water is going into, how much water... Uh, is being used into those conferences. A lot of time we have seen uh, that they've eliminated the plastic bottles, the mineral water bottles from the conferences. Uh, instead of this, they've given you alternative solutions to drinking water that they've kept. Uh, they've, they've kept those big, large water containers where you can just fill up the water uh, and they've given you a glass to fill it up. So one glass per attendee and you can drink as much water as you want rather than taking one plastic bottle, drinking it and throwing it, then going and getting another plastic bottle, drinking it and throwing it. One glass per attendee and you can keep with you and keep refilling it as many times you want to refill it. So probably such concepts are coming in where WWE is being transformed into a reality by the event management company. Is, is that clear to all of you? So, just one last thing and finishing off the session where I just need to discuss one thing more important with you before we get to the last phase of our discussion. I hope you're all very sound and clear with the sustainability perspective we are trying to take uh, currently. We can just broaden our discussion in a summary in next 10 minutes, uh, whatever we have discussed over the last 90 or 100 odd minutes into this debrief. Uh, which will help you reinforce the concept. I will be sharing my presentation with you. You can take a printout of that, so that can really well, uh, work well with you as a summary. I prepared another Word document as well, but I will prefer that you use the PowerPoint presentation as a summary instead of the Word document, because the Word document was a support of this presentation. So uh, whatever you're seeing on the Word document, you can see a bit of a commentary in the Word document. But I would prefer, I hope this uh, word, uh, this presentation file is much better for all of you to be used in. Okay, one of the last things, few of the last things, sorry. Looking into the key models and theories based upon what we have discussed over the last 100 minutes. Uh, the key models and theories, which I believe are uh, based upon my perspective and my assumptions. Again, these are hypothetical assumptions. Project documentation, roles and responsibility to me is an important article which you should be exploring into. There was something about project initiation document in the process, uh, event management process given to us on page number eight of the precinct debrief. There was a project initiation document word used in. So they might ask you to make a project initiation document for a new event which Rodnam is planning and you might need to make an PID. We know PID is part of your syllabus, so better be prepared for that. Applying big data and data analytics, we got a glimpse of that today in our discussion. Data analytics becoming something new in this industry. Principles of e-marketing, they, uh, they are doing marketing. Rodnim is doing marketing, 
that is given in the pre-scene. They are using the social media as well, but they probably might need to upgrade their marketing strategies by bringing more of e-marketing into it. World of Intelligent Agent, that is a good article because that will give you more about AI's uh, artificial intelligence. Application of new technology part three, uh, cloud computing, because they have off-site storing facilities at Rodnim. Cybersecurity, we know that was a threat. Uh, four line of defense, we know that there are a lot of risk uh, given in the scenario, and risk is an important part of your syllabus. We know questions comes on risk. Uh, a risk register was given to us uh, of Rodnim, uh, and a lot of risk the Rodnim is facing is given to us uh, in, in the pre-scene uh, case. So probably uh, Rodnim can have those four lines of defense uh, to assure that they're mitigating the risk in a more proper manner. So having an understanding of the four lines of defense could be important. Growing in partnership, Yes, collaborations, cooperations, joint ventures, strategic alliances. We discussed so much about that. Strategic pl planning process part two, be because that is all about strategic choices. And Amanda and Sefi has a lot of strategic choices to choose from and to grow. Even this uh, strategic planning process part two has end soft metrics. Uh, they might think about a market development. They might need to think about a product development. They might need to think about whether they want to uh, penetrate into the existing market. They want to go to a new market. They want to develop a new product. So the soft metrics could be really helpful. Integrated reporting framework, because when you're talking about sustainability and all such things, six capitals, something around six capitals, you know that's a favorite area of the examiner. Market segmentations. Yes, we have seg some segmentations into the market like corporate, public, private. So something around segmentations of the market. Even we have the types of um, events, musical concerts, conferences, sports events, virtual events. So something about segmentizing the market in terms of types of events or types of customers could not be ruled out. Models and soft metrics, we just heard, discussed that, that how Amanda and Sefi can use met and soft metrics for the market or product development or market penetration, something like that. Four to five forces, a lot of uh, information is there about industry in the pre-scene as well, where four to five force could be established. Uh, SAF model, uh, when Amanda and Sefi has so much strategic choices, they need to be evaluated. The Tara model, we know there are risks, so probably you might be asked for risk mitigations using the Tara model. Uh, you might be asked to do the risk mitigations like the likelihood and impact or the heat map of the risk currently facing by uh, Rodman, Rodnim. Sorry. Uh, PID, uh, you need to know the project initiation document, how to make it. Six capitals of IR. Porter Diamond, because a lot of national advantage was there with Harland. Uh, we discussed the national advantage, which is there with uh, Harland. And that's why this industry is flourishing well there. Uh, macro environment analysis like Pestle, because there is a lot of information given on that, even in pre-scene, and more can come on the day of exam. ISO 14000 certification could be important because considering there's so much about eco-sustainability standing out. So Amanda and Sefi might even think about attaining this ISO 14001 certificate uh, to give themselves a plus point uh, and portray themselves as a company which has environmental sustainability in place. So you know there is a short topic on ISO 14000 which I have covered in my syllabus as well. And Mendlow metrics, obviously stakeholder is a favorite area of examiner. So any sort of discussion around that could be possible. These are my assumptions on models. Uh, now a student might ask, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? There is no exhaustive list to it, right? So we can put the whole syllabus around Rodnim, not, not that case. This is just my perspective. I know a favorite student question is, what about this model? Can this come in? Can this come in? Can this come in? Can this come in? There is no limit to that, right? But this is just an assumption of how I read the pre-scene, how I saw the pre-scene. You must have read pre-scene in a different angle. You must have investigated pre-scene in a different angle. You might have a summary different to me, which is very good. You might have different models to me, which is good, because that's the beauty of pre-scene. The purpose of the debrief is to add value. You might have difference of opinions. You might have a different thought process. You might have made a summary in a different manner to me. Uh, that's, that's, is, that is what pre-scene is at the end of the day. So ACCA is not saying that the tutor debrief is the most affirmative document to be used by the student. No, they have given you the debrief. You've read it. You made a summary. So it's now up to you for the next seven days, you stick to my summary, you stick to my perspective, or you carry on your own perspective and take to the exam hall. The bottom line is 
pre-seen is not the answer. It's just giving you the context. Final tips and takeaways. Pre-seen isn't the answer. Answer is within the specific exhibits. Pre-seen provides context only on the day of exam, and there could be some links spontaneously from the pre-seen which you can make up, which can make up your answer. But again, only five to ten percent. On the right hand side, event management industry is prosperous globally and within Harlan. Rodnim has the potential to grow. They have options in front of them. We have discussed so many of those options. It's about choosing them and implementing them. Rodnim is among the small players and just six years old into this business. So they have to learn a lot and explore a lot. Uh, the net promoter score and the net profit margins are down and they're concerning factors for this business. Virtual events is becoming the next big thing and cooperation, including alliances, holds the key for future. So these are the final tips and takeaways from the pre -scene. Now, just one last thing before I can take your Q&A. How was the overall pre scene? Uh, did you absorb it? Did you understood it? Did you understood the dimensions about industry? where we are as Rodnim, where we want to be as Rodnim, what options Rodnim have in front of them. Are you all clear on that side? The summary will get to you, right? Did we take perspective of the key questions which could develop in? Questions around, uh, we have developed a lot of question list, which I will be sharing with you. Right, we, we had that list of questions, right? If you can just put that in front of you. We developed this list of questions, right? Uh, as we were going through and discussing the pre-scenes, questions around six capitals, question around sustainability practices can be part of the list as well. So please ensure you are uh, absorbing the pre-scene. The purpose of pre-scene is just to make you familiar. Now see, nine, just in two hours, we know so much about Rodnim. And that's, that's what is needed for the day of exam. At least we know about Rodnim revenue, NPS, uh, we know about the net profit. We know about the tender success rate. We know about the opportunities in the industry. We know about the threats in the industry. We know about the facts and figures. We know about Amanda and Sefi as two people. We know about Dika, 22-year-old graduate. That is what is needed, right? So if you know this, when you're writing the answer, you might remember Dika, a 22-year-old graduate. You might remember, oh, the revenue was going up. Oh, the NPS was going down. You might recall these spontaneously, and that could be written in the answer to develop your point. That is that is pre-seen, basically, right? So is everyone clear with the key articles, the key models, the questions, perspectives? So did you like the dimensions that we started first with industry as a whole? Then we went down to amend, uh, to Rodnim, where they are currently, and then what opportunities and threats do Amanda and Sefi has in front of them, and how they would look into that, devising their future strategies. Yes, you might be asked a question to choose between collaborations and alliances or joint ventures and collaborations. We know questions have come in the past papers about uh, bargaining between franchisings and joint ventures. So examining a team has that tendency of our, having an argument between uh, is collaboration good, is joint venture good? So please ensure you read the article Growing in Partnership. Uh, again, Raj, it depends upon the ex information in exhibit, right? There could not be an affirmative answer which one of them is better. It depends upon the information on the day of exam. The problem with the student is they start developing hypothetical questions and they, they want an affirmative answer to that. Uh, aren't we reading four exhibits on the day of exam? Uh, Niha, definitely uh, in information systems, uh, we discussed that Amanda and Sefi are very proactive. They are a company into technology. They're using a lot of information systems. So technology is not a new dimension for Amanda and Sefi. They're into technology, right? But it's about Amanda and Sefi to look into AI, to look into data analytics, to look, look into live streaming, and to look into virtual events. Right? Is that clear, Neha? So as a company, they are into technology. That's wonderful. But they need to move on. So what, what I have also said in my lecture today that Amanda and Sefi are proactive to technology.
Yes, project sponsors, project managers, anything around PID. I, I've, I've recommended you to read the article on project initiation document, right? That covers the role of project sponsors, project managers. Again, some things around that is also possible. Yes, yeah, strategic alliances are formal, right? Because you need to make an agreement for that. Uh, I don't know which student was asking that question, but uh, the word formal means that the strategic alliances are formal. You need to formulate an agreement. There has to be a terms of conditions between the two people making a strategic alliance. So that's why it's formal. Uh, the cooperations and collaborations could be informal, but for a joint venture or for a strategic alliance with any of the business, you need to have a formal terms of terms and conditions, right? Okay, I, I think most of the questions you all are putting in, again, it's just hypothetical assumptions. My bottom line is that four exhibits on the day of exam will give you the information and you have three tasks. You look into the task, you know which exhibit to read, read the exhibit and make your answer. At the back of the mind, you have all about Rodnim with you. So wherever you want to bring any information, bring it. Because whatever assumptions I was taking, whatever assumptions you are taking are assumptions at the end of the day. We never know what strikes the exam. Nic Nicoletta, there could be, uh, uh, there are issues, challenges, just like the one you are raising. Again, uh, that's, that's the way every student is reading the pre-scene. So every student is saying, isn't this an issue? Isn't that an issue? Isn't this a threat? Isn't this an opportunity? What, what I've said, I hope you're not listening to me. What I've said at the end of the day, each of us have read the pre-scene. Each one of us has extracted pre-scene. Each one of us has made a summary. Each one of us ha has identified the issues, problems, challenges, opportunities, and threats, right? Now, it's not about reconciling that. Is it right? Is it right? Is it this? Is it that? Because most of the questions coming in is on that subject matter. I hope you're all clear on that, right? So stick to your pre-scene. Uh, use my pre-scene as a value addition. Use my pre-scene as, uh, as an increment to your learning process. It's not just about taking my pre-scene. Hold your pre-scene, hold your summary. Just add value what you have uh, got from the last 100 minutes. So what you need to do in the next seven days, pass paper practice and just... Uh, fine tune yourself around key models, key articles and key questions I've given you. Is that clear to all of you? Uh, how would you rate the overall pre-scene out of uh, on a scale of one to five, one being bad to five being excellent? Just a quick answers on that. One being bad and five being excellent. On a, rate, on a scale of that, please just rate the pre-scene quickly. And don't be worried about uh, any actions I will be taking if you say four, three, two, one, because you're open. You're, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not uh, be doing anything to you. So don't, don't just be concerned about any intimidation threat or of my presence here in the pre scene. Okay, thank you so much, all of you. Uh, I hope if you have any further questions, because see, at the end of the day, what I've seen in the previous pre scenes as well, that once you do the debrief. Uh, student starts to raise more questions uh, and those questions are just hypothetical assumption. What about this person? What about that person? What about this thing? What about that thing? Isn't this an opportunity? Isn't that an opportunity? Isn't this a threat? Why, why did you took this as a threat? Isn't this an opportunity? Don't do this. It's just about stick, sticking to the central idea of Rodnim, sticking to some common things we and you got together. I hope... Uh, all of you and myself, we had some common things around Rodnim today. Did we have some common things uh, today? Yes, I'll be sharing everything I put on the file, right? Did we have some common things where we could be happy that you found it, I found it, right? So just stick to the common things, right? The Leave, leave aside the uncommon things. Yes, I'll be sharing the IMAX document. I'll be sharing everything I've shown on the screen, the, my PowerPoint presentation, uh, which is the key summary. 
and I'll be sharing uh, the key questions, everything, right? Don't be worried about it. It will be there with you in the next three to four hours. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming in, participating in. If you have any further questions about your exam strategy, you can ask it. Uh, not not pre-seen, right? Yes, I wish you all the very best. I wish you all, you, uh, you have a successful exam sitting coming up on Tuesday. And uh, I wish you the very best of luck, right? Okay, thank you all of you so much. So that is it then from the pre-scene. Yes, just please look into the WWE. That is the waste, water, and energy. Because again, that's somewhere the information can come into the exam paper. Yes, any uh, pending emails, I will be responding that in 24 hours because now, now I'm over with my pre-scene debrief. I was just waiting for this to happen. Now, with the next 24 hours, I'll be clearing my backlogs of WhatsApp and emails. No, 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 please don't uh, read IMEX. Uh, IMEX was just shared for uh, opening your mindset that sustainable practices are taking place in this industry. Uh, don't waste time reading IMEX, right? You just need to have a central idea that yes, uh, practices around waste, practicing around water, practicing around energy is taking place. Okay, all the best to all of you. Thank you so much for coming in, participating in into the session. If you need any further guidance, any further support, you are there in the WhatsApp group and I'll be active over the next 24 hours to respond to your queries. Let first me respond to the emails. And I think on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'll be active on the WhatsApp groups for your queries. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, finishing off this meeting now. Take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.